I want to address a claim in your lecture notes and in your book that the Clausius and Kelvin-Planck versions of the second law of thermodynamics are equivalent. So the two versions, Kelvin-Planck says that it is impossible for any system to operate in a thermodynamic cycle and deliver a net amount of energy by work to its surroundings while receiving energy by heat transfer from a single thermal reservoir. The Clausius version, a little shorter, it is impossible for any system to operate in such a way that the sole result would be an energy transfer by heat from a cooler to a hotter body. Just to be clear, both of these quotes come directly from your textbook. So the claim is that these are equivalent statements. What I want to do is to provide specific physical examples where we're clearly violating one version of the law and we can show that we violate the other. So if that works both ways, then you might imagine that indeed these are equal statements. So let's start with the Kelvin-Planck version of the second law. And I'm just going to put some reservoirs here. We'll use them eventually. And I'm going to attach a cycle to the hot reservoir. Now, my goal is to clearly violate the Kelvin-Planck version of the second law. And if I do that, I want to show that I also violate the Clausius version. So what would represent a violation of the Kelvin-Planck version? Well, let's just hook up to a single thermal reservoir, get heat from that, and get work out, right? Kelvin-Planck says that's impossible. Okay, so our system in this case for the Kelvin-Planck version is just the thing doing the cycle, okay? It gets heat in, gets work out. Kelvin-Planck says that's impossible. But now what I'm going to do is add in another system over here. This one gets work in, takes heat from the cold reservoir, and transfers it to the hot reservoir. So that could be a refrigeration or a heat pump cycle, right? So totally allowed, everybody buys that those cycles exist. But now if we define a new version of our system to include both of these cycles, so what if we draw a circle around both cycles, what is the net effect of this system? Well, there's no work done, right? Because we circled all of the work arrow, so there's no work in or out, it's all just internal stuff. We transfer heat from the cold reservoir, definitely, and we transfer heat both from the hot and back into the hot, but if we're taking heat away from the cold, we have to end up transferring more heat energy to the hot than we take out. Well, that tells us that this new system we define just transfers heat from a cold reservoir to a hot reservoir. But we know we can't do that. That's the Clausius version of the second law. So what we did was we set up a violation of the Kelvin-Planck second law, attached a refrigeration cycle to it, which everybody accepts as being all right, and found that we violated the Clausius version of the second law. All right, violate one, you violate the other. Now let's proceed starting with the Clausius version instead of the Kelvin-Planck. So let's set up a system where we're just transferring heat. Okay, we have a hot reservoir, we have a cold reservoir. Okay, you don't even need a cycle, right? You just have a bar connecting them. You're transferring heat from cold to hot. Clearly that is violating the Clausius version of the second law if this is our system, right? All it's doing is transferring heat the wrong direction. So now we want to prove that this could also violate the Kelvin-Planck version of the law. Okay, we'll put a cycle over here, and this one is going to take heat energy from the hot reservoir, dump heat energy to the cold reservoir, and do work. That's just a regular old power cycle, right? Totally acceptable, everybody likes those. So now we define our system, in kind of a strange move, to include both the cycle, the bar connecting the two reservoirs, and the cold reservoir. So you draw a really big system here. So now what is our system doing? Well, it's in connection with a single thermal reservoir, the hot reservoir. Remember, the cold reservoir is part of our system, so it's this internal thing, doesn't matter. Well, now we've managed to be in contact with a single thermal reservoir, and we've done work on the environment. That's the Kelvin-Planck version of the second law, right? So clearly we set up a system that violated the Clausius version, and as a result, we violated the Kelvin-Planck version. This suggests that they're probably mathematically equivalent statements, what we've actually demonstrated is that for these particular physical scenarios, you violate one, you violate the other.